and welcome to Seed Plate Eat. My name is Stacy Givens, and I'm the owner of the Side Yard Farm and Kitchen in Portland, Oregon. And today, we have my good friend Sarah Schneider on the show. Say hi. Hi. Uh, Sarah is the head chef over at the Nightwood Society. Welcome, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Stacy. so much for having me. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you, so you much. for coming. Um, yeah, I've known Sarah. How long have we known each other now? I was trying to think about it. I think 2005, 2006. Six-ish, so 14, 15 years. Oh, my God. It's because we're old. Because we're so old. Well, you're older. Okay, 10 days. <laughs> 10 days older than you. If every year I get this shit from her. We're both Capricorns. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Lucky us. Lucky us. So we get shit done. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure do. So, um, well, tell me a little bit about uh, the Nightwood Society. So the Nightwood Society is a woman-owned and operated event space in Northeast Portland, we cater to large parties. We're doing a lot of online content right now because it's Corona season, so nobody's really trying to get married today. So we're uh, working on different fun things so people can uh, get together online and talk about food, talk about um, togetherness, what they're doing to survive, exercise, anything that you can think of. And uh, we're doing that. We're doing a big Mother's Day box. So you can get all the things that you need for your mom, including flowers from Rosemary Stafford and Cooper Mountain Wine. Wow. Yeah, sweet. so it's a big one. Yeah, check them out. Mother's Day, it's coming up. Also, any of those sweatshirts you ever see that say the future are female, or, or the future of food is female, that's uh, the Nightwood Society. So go support them. They're awesome. We love them. Um, well, I'm happy you're here today. Thanks for having me. We are making farmy <laughs> snacks during <laughs> Corona season. Um, you're at home, you're snacking. That's what we're all doing. We have a lot of time at home and who doesn't love a snack? You're just eating all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm just eating all the time. All the time. And drinking all the time. And all more the eating after that. So we want to like show you some like really easy snacks that are super farm driven, but also easy to make and a little interesting because you're probably getting bored with like chips out of a things. bag and yeah, the yeah. same stuff. Yeah. So that's what we're doing for you today. Um, well, I mean, before we start, it's a hot day today. I think we really need to start with a beverage. Most likely, yes, please. Okay. Well, we both have a good friend named Jenna. Jenna is lovely. We, we love her. We do. And she owns Foolproof PDX, which is a zero proof um, beverage yeah. company. Yeah. Yeah. And she makes delicious mocktails. Yes. And she uses derivatives from the farm. She uses all lots of holistic stuff in there yes. too. So super good for you. And they can be used for your zero proof needs and or you can add booze to them as well. You can, yeah. Um, well, today she supplied us with her tropical heat turmeric tonic. And this is actually gonna be on our side yard farm um, online farm store. Um, it's on there right now. Check it out. You guys could try it, but let's taste them. Yeah, let's taste it. Yeah. I'm so thirsty. I am so thirsty. Stay away from me. We got, we got to, we got to stay away from each other, you know? Yes. I might have put too much. Uh, no, it looks great. I think it's going to be delicious. Do you like turmeric? I love turmeric. I do too. Especially in beverages. It's so good. Yeah. I always feel healthier when I consume it. So it must be working. It's good for inflammation. Yeah. And we stand a lot. Everything hurts. So turmeric helps. And then Jenna like harvested some flowers for us today to garnish with. So I'm gonna go with borage because I love borage. Alright, I'll go not borage. Okay. Just a little bit. Calendula. Cool. Cheers. 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 Mmm. Mm. Earthy. So good. It is really good. You know? Mm, delicious. Another thing, Jenna was helping us out on the farm the other day, and we all had like our mask on and we we're like harvesting and we're all so thirsty, but the reason why we haven't been drinking water is because you can't with the mask on, you just keep going. So straws are gonna make a comeback. That's what we're talking about. They really are, think about it. Not plastic straws, like, you know. Still Portland. Yeah, come on. Still Portland. So anyways. Um, so this is an eight foot table, by the Ooh. way. So, and we're wearing gloves. We're keeping it clean, we're keeping Keep it, it safe. Okay. Yeah. Drink this all day. All day, every day. You want some rum in there? No, not yet. 
Wow. Okay, fine. I'm surprised. Okay. I know. I don't know who I, I am. I know. I, I just was taken back by that. It was just like, mm, I was just kind of like drinking this and it was so good. But yeah, let's put rum in. I have some Hold spice on. Let me rum. make space. <laughs> New Deal Distillery. Also local. We love them as well. We work with them a lot, uh, especially in the past. We used to do really fun farm brunches and um, pair them with their cocktails in their space, in their distillery uh, for a couple of years. It was a lot of fun. And again, you know, it's been a long day on the farm, so. Mm. Always it's a little a more bit. for Sarah. <laughs> I get real thirsty. I gotta stir it. Oh wait, but. Nah. No. I'll, I'll See, give it. I was teaching you guys a lesson. You thought I was gonna put the <laughs> spoon in there and I didn't. We're gonna just put it over there. All right, cheers again. Cheers again. Mm. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> it's good with rum. <laughs> Especially when you don't mix it. <laughs> <laughs> And things are gonna get wild. Yep. Woohoo. Mmm. So delicious. Mm -hmm. Okay. So boozy. Well, thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Jenna. We love you. Yep. And check out Foolproof PDX um, online on Instagram or um, on the Side Yard Farm uh, Farm Store. We're gonna make three things for you today: farmy popcorn that includes lovage powder and pecorino cheese and some pretty flowers on top. Second thing, breakfast radish with nasturtium caper butter. Mm -hmm. And last, fried cardoons, which are like one of my favorite things with the magnolia petal ranch dressing. So first, we are gonna start with farmy popcorn. The popcorn. Popped by Sarah. Smells I can do delicious. it. <laughs> well, the Nightwood ladies pretty much live off of popcorn, so I'm pretty sure I have also gone through more popcorn than I'd like to admit. Since <laughs> quarantine time has happened. Now I can't say quarantine. Sorry. Earlier we were, I apparently don't say it right. I say cor like quarantine, like corn. Um, yeah, that's what happens when you grow up with a Greek mother that doesn't pronounce things that well. So we have popcorn. Um, today we popped it in a little bit of coconut oil and just a little tiny bit of salt right when it was done. And then yeah. now we're going to put some garlic oil. So we make this all the time for bike and movie night. It's a pretty popular popcorn we make. Um, I know everybody's probably getting sick of how much I love Lovage, but I fucking love Lovage. And it really makes the popcorn. And again, for you, for those of you that don't know what Lovage is, it's an herb that tastes like cardamom and celery had a baby. So um, we dehydrate the leaves and make this nice little dust out of it uh, to flavor the popcorn, but we put the garlic oil on the popcorn, not just for flavor, but also to have the salt and the lovage powder stick to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of this garlic oil on top and kind of give it shaking the popcorn a little bit. So we're able to get all of the pieces. We're going like to cover that. the whole thing. Are you a chef? I am. Wow. Not even one popcorn fell out. I know. So good. Now it's gonna fall. Know, you're gonna jinx gonna me. Fall. Now you're gonna jinx me. <laughs> um, and from after that, we're gonna add a little bit of pecorino. Mm. Again, you're wanting to Love not pecorino. spill pe pecorino all over your table. Don't want to do that. But put it. <laughs> <laughs> but put it all over the cheese. And again, stirring it up a bit so you're coating all of the popcorn. All the kernels. And then we'll go a little salt in here. So yeah, I like finely ground salt. I'll throw kosher salt into a spice blender and just make it nice and fine and powdery. Just tastier, gets every kernel. Ooh, yeah. Cool. Oh, so maybe a little more cheese because. We love cheese. Because cheese. All right. Cool, slide it over. Hey, thanks. Team effort. Whoop, whoop. All right, now we're gonna put the magic. Lovage dust. And to dehydrate something, you don't necessarily need to have a dehydrator to do it. You can just put it in your oven at the lowest temperature overnight, and it will dry up nicely for you. Totally. That is a good trick. All right. And then, of course, we're going to make it pretty. Yes, I put flowers on everything. I also put flowers on everything. All right. So these are just because dehydrated, like, um, marigolds and calendula that we usually, at the end of the season, we have so many flowers and uh, we just harvest all of them once we're at the end of the season and pick the petals and throw them in the dehydrator. And then uh, they're good forever. So great to use, especially during the winter time too, when you have dishes that need a little bit of brightness. Voila. I like the way they taste too. The, the, fl the flowers. Marigold flowers. The marigolds yeah. especially, yeah. yeah. I they add it. like an interesting weird kind of peppery delicious texture yeah taste. the leaves are also great too yeah um 
They're kind of like citrusy and bubble gummy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they're nice when they're small and baby-like and floating in a salad or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Or in your cocktails. Or in your cocktail. All right, there we go. There you have it. All the secrets to the farmy popcorn. Farmy popcorn. Cheesy, delicious, love -a Great snack. So for our second dish, we're going to prepare one of my favorite things that I love eating more than anything other than popcorn is radishes with butter and nasturtium capers in it as well. And this is a super easy, simple, clean, fresh thing to eat. Like, yeah, brings back all the all the good feels. All the good feels. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't you go to Paris a lot? Not a lot, but okay. I have a couple times. <laughs> Aren't you there like all the eating time? Eating, I mean, as often as I can. Yeah. I'd like to go. I'd like to be there always. Yeah. Um, and yeah, eating radishes and butter in Paris and drinking Chablis is my dream, like my dreamiest life. I so. mean, this radish is called the French breakfast radish for a reason. For breakfast, <laughs> <laughs> all of your breakfast needs. All your breakfast needs. Um, people all over France. Uh, no, they or Portland. A, or Portland. It's a great snack. Or for breakfast, whatever. It's refreshing. It's great. Cut those suckers in half. Throw some salted butter in there. It doesn't have to be an nasturtium caper. Um, any flavored butter if you want, or just no butter. Or I'm sorry, all the butter. Everything's better with butter. I just mean sea salt in your butter. Um, yeah, and you can preserve the tops and do something else with the tops too. I like to braise them down with just like onions and tomatoes and greens. Like utilize everything, the whole part of this vegetable. It's, one of those, it's, one, of those, it's one of those good things you can yeah, do. Yeah, especially when the leaves are tender and small like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's do this. So we have some, what's in the bowl? So we have a little bit of cultured butter here um, that's tempered. So to temper butter, just leave it out for a couple hours and let it soften up a bit so it's easier to um, manipulate. Mix around, yep. So we just have like a little bit of butter here and I'm going to add a little bit of salt. She means for, a lot. For the she inside. Salt. I'm a salty babe, fun fact. Very salty. Um, and we're just gonna mix that in a little bit and then um, I personally really like the texture of the salt afterwards, like with um, the radishes. So we'll ha I'm going to slide the butter over to Stacy, and she's going to get the capers in there. So these aren't your normal everyday capers. You probably can't see that. <laughs> these are uh, nasturtium seeds that have been processed like capers. Um, so if you have nasturtium plants at home, once they go to seed and they're like that nice lime green color, Harvest them. Take the time and harvest them and put them in a saltwater brine for three days on your counter. Rinse them out. That will make them all squishy like capers are. And then just make a standard pickling brine with your sugar, salt, and water, and vinegar, white wine vinegar. Um, pour it over it. And then these guys will be good for about six months to a year in the fridge. Um, yeah, these are from last summer, actually. Uh, anything that you would use capers in, you could use nasturtium capers for. And even the raw seed on its own is pretty interesting. You can mash it up. Timothy Wastel told me about this. You can mash it up and make like a pungent, almost like a wasabi-like paste. Mm. Um, nasturtiums are so interesting, you know? Even the leaves themselves are spicy. The flowers are beautiful for edible flower mixes. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, anyways, so we have these beautiful pickled nasturtium capers. And I chopped them up a little bit so they're not these huge chunks. So we're going to add it to the butter. But the texture that's going to come out of that is going to be super good and nice with the crunchy um, so radishes. Crunchy. So crunchy. Crunch on crunch. Crunch on crunch. A little bit more crunch. <laughs> that's the salt. Oh, yeah. It's like crunch times three. Yeah. It's a crunchy dish. <laughs> <laughs> You're a crunch It's the dish. rum. <laughs> First, it's your mother. Now it's I the knew. Rum. I was gonna say. I was gonna say your mom's a crunchy dish. I'm like, are people still saying that? Yeah, okay. it's fun to talk about people's moms. Yeah, but then, well, never mind. Okay. Yeah. It's ready. All right. Yum. So, I'm gonna grab a little spoon. Those are beautiful radishes. Where are they from? These are beautiful <laughs> radishes from. Oh please. Oh wait, they're from here. Oh. Oh. Yum. And then just a little bit on top, salt on top. Why not? Because why not? And then, yeah, dip it. Just the dip. Just dip. Do you want to dip it? I mean, I mean, why not? I know it's like your favorite thing, so I'm going to let you dip it. I'm definitely going I'll to. Stay, I'll stay away from you. Mm. That's good. 
So go ahead and buy some radishes on the Side Yard Farm website. We also are you're also selling all of the butter as well too. Yeah, right? we do an nasturtium butter, a calendula flour butter, and a chamomile butter. Ooh. That's really good on toast and honey. For our last snack of the day, we're making one of my favorite things: fried cardoons. I know a lot of you are probably like, "What the fuck is a cardoon?" Um, it is in the artichoke family, and What's the interesting thing about cardoons is you want the stalk. You don't want the actually the flowering thistle like you do with artichokes. So it's a beautiful plant and it does look like artichokes when it's growing. People just walk up to the farm like, look at all your artichokes. I'm like, no, those are actually cardoons and those are even better. I always so. feel like I want to say cardoon with a Scottish accent. Like, give me those cardoons. <laughs> I don't know, just once or twice. <laughs> or in Italian, people say cardoons. Card Cardunes. 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 Give me those Cardunes. Um, so they're great. You'll see them all over Italy. If you've ever been to Italy, all over Italy, they're gorgeous. Um, so when we harvest them, this is how we sell them to people, basically. Like, we strip off the leaves for them. It's an extremely bitter. I know it looks like celery, but please do not take a bite out of this raw. Extremely bitter. My fingers right now, extremely bitter. It will ruin your day. Don't do that. Um, so it is a, it's definitely a labor of love. You have to really want to, <laughs> want to really work with cardoons if you're going to do it. Um, it's a commitment. It's a, it's a commitment. Um, but it's worth it. It's worth it. A lot of our chefs that we sell produce to love that we have cardoons. And again, I take the time because I love fried cardoons. I like a lot of fried things, but. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't? So anyways, um, it's a process. So. What I did, so this is what it looks like after you've blanched them. So what you're going to do Which is... Which blanch means cook them in a lightly salted water. Yes. Or in this case, I did like a court bouillon, like a flavorful liquid. I used white wine, aromatics like black peppercorn, thyme, bay leaf, garlic, um, just whole lemons. I squeezed lemons in there and just threw the lemons in there as well. Flavorful liquid. Yeah, and a little bit of water and then salt for sure. And I just let it go for at least an hour till they were fork tender. But before you do that, what you want to do is get a paring knife and just like strip right down these sides to get these ribs off, just like that. It's kind of stringy. So once you kind of get those stringy bits and get the little prickly parts and the rib, then you're going to cut them into uniform pieces. This is about three inches or so. And then put them in your flavorful liquid until they're fork tender. Okay. So we started off by heating our oil to 350 degrees. Uh, for frying, <clears throat> and then we cut the cardoons into little inch to inch and a quarter or ish size Like pieces. little nuggets. Little tiny little nuggets. cardoon nuggets, if you would. Yeah, and we are going to serve those with a uh, farm ranch dressing that I like to make. Um, it has dill, parsley, chives, and then all your standard stuff that normally is in ranch. Sour cream, mayonnaise, buttermilk, lemon juice, garlic. One little kick we're adding to that is, um, it's a springtime favorite of mine, uh, pickled magnolia petals with a little bit of the brine as well. Um, every season in the spring, I go around and steal magnolias. <laughs> Get it? Like the movie, Steal Magnolias. <laughs> oh, yeah. but I'm pumped. If you're over 35, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Dolly Parton. Dolly, she's a woman. Just have to say, shout out to Dolly Parton. Yeah. Shout out. Thank you for existing and creating this I world. I love you. Uh, so I go and steal magnolias from neighbors and things. At this point, I'm not even stealing anymore. I'm like, yo, could I steal your magnolias? They're like, yeah, sure, we know. <laughs> and I fill up bus tubs and bus tubs full of magnolias. And then I make just a pickling brine um, with white wine vinegar, sugar, water, salt, and uh, some honey. Hmm. And then I pour it over the picked petals. Um, Hot or cold? Ooh, good question. Thank you for asking. Um, you want to do it cold because the petals will just... You'll cook the petals and you don't want to do that. And then these also will hold for, I mean, I've had, I have some still from last season. Um, but these are the freshies. So let's go ahead and if you want to continue cutting those little nuggets. Yeah. I am going to make some ranch dressing. So we're going to start with a little bit of sour cream. Some mayonnaise. Because mayo makes the world a better place as well. It mayo sure and does. butter. I mean, just saying. Yeah. Big fan. Big fan. Some buttermilk. Lemon juice. Garlic. Is that raw garlic in there or is that, do raw you garlic. cook it? Do you, you prefer can. it? You Popped could. Up? So 
you can do, I personally like the microplane. If you have a microplane at home and just like gradient against the microplane to get a really fine grate on it. Um, and you if you could don't totally, have a microplane, go buy one. You could cook it, you could totally caramelize it, which would be really awesome too. Um, but I love garlic. And ah, oh, we should have done green garlic. It's spring. If you have green garlic in your garden, yank one out and throw it in this ranch. It'd be or delicious. Or maybe access to green garlic through, are you selling it on the I website? I mean, I am selling it on the website. Weird. You guys want to check out the, <laughs> thank you, Sarah. I mean, you want to check out the online farm store. All your needs, everything, greens, radishes, green garlic, 20 plus different varieties of herbs, farmer chef boxes, you name it. All a bunch of stuff from all my buddies, wine, honey, all the things, Jenna's yeah. drinks. Get Jenna's drinks. I mean, come on guys, check it out. So let me chop these up real fast. <laughs> we got chives. And since it is spring, they're starting to blossom. So you could actually pick the like little blossoms and throw them in there too, because they are so tasty and they're really beautiful as well. They add all the flavor. Yep. So we got Maybe some... while you're chopping the herbs, I'll start talking about what we're doing for the cardoons. Please. We're going to do, uh, we're going to batter them. So everybody and ev everyone, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about battering the cardoons. Everybody has different processes that they prefer. So for this particular project, we're going to do straight into an egg wash and then flour. Um, the egg wash is, is going to be a binder, so the flour is going to be able to stick to the cardoon. And we just took some egg and, Stacey, did you put a little bit of, just e sorry. Sorry. Uh, we had a neighbor walk by just now. No worries. It happens a lot at Side Air Farm. They How's like it to going? Hi. Love the Coley neighborhood. Um, so here we just have egg wash that's been slightly seasoned with a little black pepper. Whisk your eggs together till they're nice and together, mixed up, and then season it, salt and black pepper. And then flour is going to be the same. Yep. I threw a little bit of uh, cayenne in there. Just how my dad always put a little something in there, a little spice. My dad was from the south, from Little Rock. So anytime you made fried chicken dredge, it always had like a shit ton of black pepper salt pretty yeah. heavy and then some type of like spicy something you know it's got to be a little Pimentone spicy or, yeah spice up your life all right so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and start to dredge some of these puppies so into just you know a couple at a time throw them in there make sure they're fully um covered so it's able to uh, have all the flowers stick to it so then we're gonna take it uh, with a slotted spoon, take the cardoons out of the egg wash, make sure to uh, get all of that excess egg off and kind of give it a little shake so it comes off because so, you're not gonna want it to come into the egg, into the flour. If a little goes in, that's okay too. All right, and then we're just gonna use our hands. And if you don't want to, you can also just kind of give it a little shake, but I don't know, sometimes that can get messy. So just make sure you're mixing the flour and the cardoons and getting them nicely, like heavily coated. Oh my God, these are so, gonna be so good. I'm so excited. I know, I'm so, I can't wait. And we got our ranch dressing done over here. And it's beautiful with like the chive blossoms and the pickled magnolia petals, mm. There's accents of pink and purple in here and all the herbs. I love dill. I grew up with a lot of dill in my food. Um, <laughs> so I tend to eat a lot of it. Cool. Cool. All right. So, shall we? Yeah, let's fry some up. Fry a couple? Yeah. So our oil is at 350 degrees and the cardoons are ready to go in. Ooh. You're gonna cook those for two or three minutes or until they're like nicely golden on the outside because they're already cooked. You're just creating that crunchy deliciousness. Ooh. And go ahead and have a pan or a sheet tray with a piece of parchment or paper towels uh, to catch that oil once you take them out. Ooh. So make sure to be careful when you're frying at home. Um, if your temperature has gone too up, it's too hot, just turn the pan down. Don't put anything cold in there to try and cool it off. Just set it aside, the oil will come down. It might take some time. 
These are the joys of frying at home. And Make use the right oil. Do yeah. not use oil, olive oil to fry in, okay? Yeah. What kind of oil are you This using? is rice oil. Rice oil. Okay. Other good oils, canola blends are good. Yep. Um, Just want a neutral oil. Definitely, olive oil will burn, and then it'll be really smoky, and then you'll have burnt oil. That's what you will taste. It's can't disgusting. do anything with that. You can't, nothing, it's over. Done. Done. See you never. Never. Don't fry stuff in there. Even, yeah, no, just don't do it. What do you think, Chef? I think those look pretty good. Yeah? Cool. All right, should we take them out? Yeah, probably should. All right. One of the fun things after, the most important thing after you've fried anything, the second it comes out of the fryer, you have to season it with salt. Oh yeah, don't, there's a window there. Yeah, you need to catch that moment when yep. you're like, which is right now. Stacey right now. will do it because okay. I have no gloves on right now. Uh-oh. The oil that's on the, whatever you're frying will suck up the salt and help season what you've just fried. Yep, and there you go. Now that we got the fried cardines out of the fryer, we are ready to play it and eat. Make sure to also taste everything to make sure that your, your seasoning is right. Mm-hmm. Mm, delicious. Thanks. Just love those magnolia flowers. Aren't they great? It's good. All the herbs. Mm. Maybe I'll wait for the spoon. <laughs> and also, if you don't like ranch, you're dairy intolerant, um, go ahead and throw some lemon wedges on the side. It's so good with just fresh lemon juice. Or mayo. Or just mayo. Or just mayo. With lemon juice and mayo. Yeah, why not? Whatever. Cool. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. All right. Well, <laughs> here you have it. Fried cardoons with a magnolia petal ranch. Hopefully this will help you out with all of your coronavirus snacking needs. Kind of give it a little up, up and up and figure out, you know, something new to yeah, try. Yeah, totally. I'm excited to try this. Sarah, yeah. thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. This has been great. This has been great. And check out the Nightwood Society uh, for their Mother's Day brunch and for all the cool things you guys are coming up with and being creative during this hard time. Yeah. Also check out uh, Foolproof PDX um, for zero proof drinks and also check out the Side Yard Farm uh, and all our online farm store. We are feeding families this week alone. Um, we're up to like 200 families a week which is a lot for a one acre urban farm. So get all the needs you need right in Northeast Portland, pull up and uh, put it in an order. Let's dig in. Yes. I really want fried cardoons. I really want popcorn Cats. and fried cardoons. I like how we have to like stay away from each other. I'm just gonna. Let's go over here. I want some lemon Oh, too. lemon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll take this one. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just put it on my keep plate. That. Yeah, I'm just keep gonna it keep on your plate. Cool. Yeah, all right, I'll cool. take some of this. Well, thanks for tuning in to See to Play to Eat. See you next time. Oh, fuck. Still hot? Mm, no, I mean, fuck, that's good. Okay, cool.